pick, which is going to be Ancient Sisters. So to begin things, in the top right-hand corner of the map, from Basilisk, our Red Zerg player is Raynor! And his opponent in this quarterfinals, playing with the blue SCV for the Rebellion, we have Bjorn. So, here's a funny thing, is Bjorn is going to open Command Center first, I believe. Oh no, Bar oh. Barracks on the low ground, that, that works too. Very far forward Perfect. though. Yeah, very far forward. Funny thing is that Bjorn doesn't veto Ancient Sister all of the time. You might expect him to kind of do that because every Terran player vetoes this map in best of threes, but sometimes even in best of threes he plays this map because he likes doing his little Reaper thing. And so he's got experience in this, maybe more so than a lot of ter other Terran players would. So we'll see what he does. We've got to mention the Reapers of Bjorn. He's going to do it here. There's mm -hmm. so many variations, three racks. Sometimes he goes into extra racks behind this and goes for kind of a bio SCV pull all in. Those are the dangers that's going to keep Raynor on edge in the early stages. This is a strategy that Bjorn has been playing over the last half year or so, over and over and over again. This low ground wall off, not something we have historically seen that much in StarCraft II, but Raynor has got a lot of practice against this. In the past, we used to see these barracks coming up on the other side of the map. Bjorn pretty much single-handedly got the Reaper nerfed a couple times. Uh, he was way too good at controlling it back in, I think this was like 2016, maybe 2017 or so. Either way, he's very good when it comes to that early game control. These days, when we see Reaper openers, usually it's going to be about three of them. There's actually a little hole right there between those two barracks. He needs to make sure that no units are going to be able to run in. Either way, usually it's just going to be three Reapers and then a transition into a bio-based army. And I don't think that that will really be a surprise right here for Raynor. Raynor likes playing that Ling Bane-based army. He's been showing a little bit of Roach play as well throughout the last couple months, but if I were to make a guess, we're going to see mostly Marines, Marauders, and Medivacs going up against Zorklings and Banelings. It's a pretty good guess. Bio is popular, Ling Bane is popular. As our Reaper shows up, going to try and get a drone, of course, as we dance around. Just want to be careful, don't go too deep. He is going to get the first Zergling here nice and quickly, so that's a good grab. It is a reactor back at home on the first rack, so the second Reaper finishes, or the third Reaper finishes, we will go into barracks number three as well. So we got a tech lab, third barracks, and we're going to keep up the pressure here early as Bjorn. Double inject, it looks like. So Raynor actually delaying his third base here, going two additional queens. That is the correct response against this. The Triple Reaper can be kind of annoying, right? Because until Link Speed is done, it's very difficult for the Zerg to actually push this back. Now, very good control here so far. You only need one Reaper, though, on the high ground to get vision for the Reapers on the low ground to be able to fire. So far, Bjorn's micro is on point. Both barracks coming up. This is where it gets dangerous. This is where he might even consider pulling SCVs a little bit further down the line. He loves doing these tricky builds, and it's so difficult to get the scout in to see this because you're soon going to have Marines up. Oh. Both can't get forward. This little grenade helps to get the creep tumor, and that's just going to delay Raynor from feeling comfortable out the front, who can't currently get a third hatchery down. He's going to go Evo Chamber early. This is turning into a bit of a wild start already. Yeah, exactly. Having that third uh, hatchery missing here does make the game a little bit more difficult. Now, excellent micro right there by Bjorn. <laughs> that grenade and then running through it. I mean, this is pretty much as good as it comes. Oh, oh my god, that is insane. He's even going to be able to kill the drone. That is world-class Reaper micro. Bjorn feeling his absolute best. What perfect grenades and what perfect moments to turn around. He turned into the lake, yeah, which is so, through them. so unexpected that it basically lets you make that play. Now he's going to get creep tumors as well, and Bjorn is finally, surely going to lose at least one Reaper here, and he might lose more, but he has got so much value out of these, and that's terrifying when there's a stim combat 4 rax push coming up mm -hmm. next. The problem here for Zerk as well is that it's very difficult to figure out how many barracks there actually are. So we obviously have perfect vision, we can count the amount of barracks that are out there, but of course, there's no way for the Zerg to very easily figure that out. You would have to go maybe Overlord speed or a really quick lair into an Overseer to see that. At this point, Raynor has to start taking some chances. Normally, you don't quite see this many barracks at this point in the game, especially after a double uh, barracks opener. So, Bjorn's units, they're going to hit a massive power spike as soon as these upgrades in the tech labs are done. Stimpak finishing right now. Combat shields just a few seconds behind, and Bjorn is going to start marching. Look at the amount of Marines, though. Raynor's in straight-up trouble, because the third hatchery not finished, that's injects you're missing, love you just don't have. And Raynor now sees a few Marines moving out, but he didn't see the big clump. Yes, he can make some banelings, but we know what Bjorn's micro is like. He's unlikely to let slow banelings hit him here. And I think Raynor is in a world of trouble. Third hatch just finishing now feels so late. Yeah, he I, needs I mean, non-stop links. 
Yeah, and probably more, <laughs> which you just can't get. We'll see what happens. We're going to go around this left side, going to aim towards the third hatchery. The first five bailings are morphing in. Where are they morphing, though? Because if Bjorn can get on top of those quickly, that would be amazing. They're off to the right side, so they should be pretty safe to finish up, but of course, Bjorn can still target fire them down. We're going to stim in. We're going to start chasing queens. Here come the links, but there's just not that many. Yeah, keep in mind, there's no meta effects here, so nothing to really heal up those marines either. It's all about the amount of damage that they can deal while they're out here, and so far, the damage is fantastic. Queens are starting to fall. He is pushing himself into a corner that could maybe make him a little vulnerable against these Bailings, who are moving forward right now, and they will clean it up. Bailings from both sides did get the connections there, but eight drones go down. A bunch of queens died. I think Bjorn is already very happy with this still. He's ahead on workers following up from this, and he's now going to start the starport. A third CC finishing, so he can look to the future as well. Probably a little upset because it felt like it could have maybe been yeah. even better. But yes, I, I, he actually ended up kind of like splitting around the hatchery, right? So he couldn't like target fire single banes. If he'd stayed a bit more clumped, it might have actually funnily worked out even better for him. Getting those few creep tumors there earlier on as well is fantastic because the creep just wasn't out very far. Raynor didn't really see exactly where that army was coming in from and I think that probably caused him to lose a few more queens than he was planning on. Either way though, he manages to stabilize. Right now he's transitioning towards the Bingling speed upgrade as well and Centrifugal Hooks is massive. A little bit of an Overlord also, morphing itself into a Dropalord. That means he can load up to eight Zorklings into it, maybe even a bunch of Banelings. Yeah, it looks like we're actually loading Banelings into an Ovi. Yeah, Marines are going to spot the single Zergling here. They're not going to go far enough across to see the Dropalord, so this is potential for Reyno to get some damage done. He has retaken a worker lead. He has stabilized, like you mentioned, as Bjorn comes over here. He's got a few links to deal with, and again, that Overlord heading straight to his main base. His link yeah. will go down, but this overlord is what it's all about next. <laughs> this is coming in within Protoss, or sorry, Terran Vision from a mile away. Even dropped off one Baneling almost to bait, bait his opponent to show him, yo, it's not just going to be Zerklings, I have Banelings here for you. Not the most successful drop here, but it's something that can always come back in later once again as well. Plus one Carapace is done here for the Zerk player, and he's forcing some stims. He's trying to stabilize, right? He, he really needs to defend this next push smoothly. And he actually gets Zerklings in. Yep, Lings get in. The Marines from the uh, third base will have to pull across, which means maybe the Overlord now gets a chance. That's the plan, but we do pull the SCPs back. So far, Bjorn is dealing with this pretty well. His drop on the other side is being handled too. If Bjorn can kill these Lings without losing any SCVs in the main base, this is honestly pretty okay for him. He loses two now. A couple of Marines onto this Overlord. The rest of them get here. Can we stop these Balins from dropping out? They do get out, two of them, and they do connect for a bunch of SCVs. That drop, man, it was denied like seven times, but apparently the eighth time. There were too many fires to put out right there. Bjorn trying to out multitask the fastest player in this game. It's going to be very difficult to pull that off. Either way, 11 SCVs, not ideal, but I don't think it's the end of the world either. Those Zorklings, they managed to run into the natural. Yeah, they managed to kill maybe one or two SCVs, but most of them got cleaned up relatively easily. Yeah, Bjorn was so close to making that a very good defense. The bailing drop finally finding damage was obviously huge. He spots the Hydra Den here, so he knows exactly the route that Raynor is taking for later in this game. He knows this isn't just going to be Massling Bane and a faster Hive. He is going to be stopping off on the Hydras along the way. Uh oh This first Widow Mine is going to be dealt with. Well, actually, on Burrows, the second one should get killed off. This one should be able to fire now, though. What's it going to go off on? Nothing. Apparently a Queen in the end as Bjorn gets pushed back down this ramp and Raynor leaping on the opportunity to clean Bjorn out. Yeah, quite a few Marines have gone down here. Honestly, a little uncharacteristic. Bjorn usually very quick on the pickup, making sure that he does not lose his units to a few Banelings here and there. Raynor started off this game with a, uh, a pretty significant deficit, but he's managed to close it. He's trying his very best here to transition now towards Hydroling Bane. Now, Hydras are amazing because they outrange those Widow Mines, and they're good against, well, whenever the Terran makes a mistake. If you overstay your welcome, the Hydras can clean up your army very quickly. Fourth command center on the way from Bjorn, worth noting as he does find an opening for a couple of drones as well, so get some of these. Lings will wrap around, but time to just lift on out of there. Now we're pushing on the left-hand side, and Bjorn just going to try and keep Raynor moving around one side, then the other. Always wants to try and find some connections on these Lings before the Banes can catch up. And again, so far doing a pretty good job of this, even just unloading in the main base yet again. And he is just kind of edging out ahead in supply. It's not by anything significant, but he's also about to be on 2-2 versus 1-2. We'll see if he can break through soon. Like I say, it's not like he's in a rush. He has a fourth base. Bjorn mm -hmm. can play very, very good late game. And if he ever needs to shut off the aggression and just set, you know, sit back and do nothing at all, he's extremely good and patient in those games as well. Yeah, he's gotten uh, rid of all of the creep on this side of the map too. Once again, a whole lot of the Banelings do connect. There are a lot of Widow Mines. I actually thought that's what he was trying to bait the Zerg, Zerg army into here, but 
2-2 had just finished up for the Terran right after that engagement ended. Hmm. Yep. Maybe this push here on the right side is going to be a little bit more successful, though, as the drop in the main base gets cleaned up. Yeah, he got a couple Hydras over here. It takes a long time for Reno to get units back across. A couple drones went down as well. We lift up, we get out. The Widow Mine still active, is not firing up just yet. And Pion is still quick to just go back to where he just left from because he knows the Zerg is already moving somewhere else. So he's pretty happy to just go back in the same place. But no pickup here, but he is focusing again. Every single Queen on the left-hand side. This Mineral Line is not being pulled away from. And this Hatchery might be in trouble if there's no Balin showing up. There's one coming oh. in right now. Pion has to lift up. Reno gets the Hatchery save. Yeah, the hatchery is uh, very close to falling there, and I wouldn't be surprised if a follow-up drop is going to be able to clean it out, but Raynor at the very least keeps it alive here for the time being. He could always try and transfuse it back up to full. I'm honestly more concerned here about the creep spread, right? So Bjorn trying to create that, that tempo advantage for himself. He's constantly right at the edge of the creep, and it's very difficult for Raynor actually to take a good engagement off creep. He's going to try once again. Maybe the Widow Mines can help him out as they do deal a tremendous amount of damage to the Terran army as well. Yep, those Widow Mines may as well be Neural Parasite. They went dead center on the Terran forces. Friendly fire is big. He will be able to, I think, finish off this hatchery in the top left this time around. He's actually going to focus on the units for a little bit, but now he does finish that base off, knocking Raynor back down to four bases. And I'll tell you one thing that Bjorn has done marvelously, as he has had, he has some mistakes. He's had some drops that have gotten cleaned up. He's denied the creep massively. This is yeah. a map which is so hard to play on already. And if there's a good amount of creep, even an average amount of creep, it's almost impossible. But the creep spread has been very well contained, and that's allowing him to keep aggressive here. As these Widow Mines, man, they are absolutely against the Terran at the moment. Yeah, the Widow Mines helping out the Zerk a whole lot more than the Terran player. Unlike Bane Lynx, they will deal friendly fire. 3-3 three, though, three, no, coming up here nice and quickly for Bjorn. He's significantly ahead when it comes to those upgrades, and that may very well be yeah, the way that he can actually obtain the victory in this game. He's going to be aggressive, because, you know, it's Bjorn, and he likes being aggressive all the time, but he's got a killer timing attack coming up in about a minute or so from now when 3-3 three, three finishes. Raynor still desperately trying to defend. We don't have a Lurker transition. We don't have a Hive. We have none of that in this particular game just yet. He would like to get there, I'm sure, but he needs to be stable first. Yeah, he needs to be stable if he puts the money into that tech right now. Bjorn might just overwhelm him as the Ling's here. Not enough. He needs a couple of Banes, but the Banes are going down before they can reach. This might be a recancel on this hatchery. Only Hydra's in the front. We do have a couple of Wooden Mines to try and soften things up. Still no Banelings reaching this bio force. Yeah. Just too many Hydra's. They put out a lot of damage. Bjorn is retreating on the right side as well, just pulling away there for a few moments. Credit to Reynor. He continues to hang on by a thread in multiple places. And again, eventually, if he keeps doing this, he should be able to make that leap up into the next phase of this game, into those Lurkers and the Hive and everything else. Yeah, Lurkers here are amazing. Luckily, though, for Bjorn, he's got a good answer versus those units as well, as he's already adding on that Ghost Academy. Not very useful against this current Zerg unit composition, and maybe he doesn't even need it, because he's still trying to push forward, but he needs to be careful. Now we're starting to see a few Metavex going down as well. A lot of these trades not nearly as cost-efficient for the Terran as they once upon a time were. This is like pure Ling Hydra right now. There's barely any Balings mixed in. Yep. And it is truly like 34 Hydras are just standing there and putting out a lot of herd onto this Terran force. I almost feel like right now, Bjorn, instead of being split, if he joined everything together and took a big fight, might actually cause a lot of issues for Raynor, because then it's hard to have that critical mass of Hydras which Raynor is finding against these smaller armies. There's the Hive coming up. Apparently Raynor smashed his piggy bank. He just barely managed to get enough gas to afford himself a little bit of tech. Infestation Pit, Lurker Den, as well as the Hive. Yep. Getting 3-3 three, three here would be amazing, Adrenal Glands would be sick, but Lurkers really put an end to most of this type of aggression. Absolutely. Well, Lurkers really do just change a little bit of everything here as Hydra's getting a Widow Mine to start off with. We are going to be seeing our Bioforce still stimming around on the top. Some of these Bailings again just not able to connect, still having the creep just denied all the way up to this base. And this oh. time, Gun does bring pretty much everything to the top side. A couple of Bailings only. If he can get rid of those or survive them, it might be difficult for Raynor. Lings are going to come flooding in. Are the Hydra's enough right now? They kind of are, but will they continue to be enough? Here comes a lot more from the south. Raynor is going to force Bjorn back. And Bjorn will kite as he goes, but again, them Hydras are just so difficult to work. That is so many Hydras. Normally we see uh, maybe half of this amount at most. Raynor really committing into them, getting the plus two missile upgrade for them too. This is really the first time I feel like that we're seeing Bjorn getting pushed back. If it's up to him though, he's going to stay around for a little bit longer. He's now fighting the Zerg off creep. Those Banelings and Zerglings are significantly easier to deal with. But look at the production tab, Wardy. Lurkers are coming up. They are. Bjorn does have the Ghost Academy, but of course it didn't really, you know, take a moment to build any ghosts just yet. 
gotta say, so much action in this game that Bjorn's units are like half HP all the time. Yeah, he's got no energy on the meta feeling. Yeah, exactly. There we go. He just takes a moment to breathe right now, and that's all that Raynor needs. Raynor has been up with his back against the wall for the last, what seems like, 12 minutes. Honestly, ever since the Reapers first came in, he's been playing defensively. Most Zerg players out there will take a critical amount of damage, and this is a, a bad feeling for Terran, right? When suddenly you see those spines coming out of the ground, your Widow Mines can no longer get into, into the position that you want him. Young doesn't know, so he should be again making an effort to go in towards the ghost here as soon as he tries to outposition up to this top side. There's a couple of veins to get through. He can at the moment kind of stay out of range of most of the lurkers. He is taking down a lot of the hydras as oh. well. He's gonna go diving on these lurkers. There was only five of them, and all five are gonna drop. Now this hatchery is in trouble, and Bjorn decided to just charge through, and he was not afraid, and he is gonna be able to break down this base. Yeah, Terrence usually don't do that, but Bjorn, one of the very few who can actually micro against those lurkers, even when he's on creep, even when the lurkers are already burrowed on the ground. This army is gonna have to get on out of there eventually, but Bjorn has finally killed another base. Okay, faking the drop towards the main base, decides to unload once again. This hatchery is still low hit points from earlier. He targets it down and it will indeed fall. Cost him a little bit of bio, but he's knocking down the economy. He's knocking down the production and that puts Bjorn into a fabulous position. There's Widow Mines not being dealt with. That's the position we're in right now as the Terran has truly started to overrun here on Ancient Sister. Five drones have gone down as well. I think that's one of those Widow Mines that managed to refire the drop from the top section of the map. They're gonna try and maybe see if they can force the council once again. Reynold just sort of chasing this entire army around right now though. This expansion on the right side, definitely not gonna happen. And Bjorn is transitioning towards ghosts as well. Yep, those ghosts coming up. I gotta say, I love that move on those lurkers earlier. You yeah. saw Raynor kind of smile on the camera too. He's like, man, of course you do that. Like everyone else would just back away and leave my base alone and you just decided to dive, and it was the right call, obviously, as that's going to be a nice Widow Mine as well. At this point, Reno is just bleeding out a little bit too much. The Ghost really will be pot potentially the finishing blow, right? Because that's the answer to the Lurkers that Bjorn maybe doesn't have on the map already. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he's just away with this game. He's maxed out versus 150. It's a challenge for Reno, who's having to re-expand still. His economy is in the bin at 60 workers. It's just not that great. It's not where the Zerg wants to be at all. Yeah, Bjorn also doesn't have that much economy compared to where Terran players are normally at this yeah, point in the game. That could be Raynor saving grace here, but he needs to be he needs to be getting some value here over the next couple of minutes. Now, catching a few of those Marines and Marauders in the middle of the map, not a bad pull at all. But if it's going to come at the cost of your entire army because of the flank, it is not going to be worthwhile. Raynor bleeding out a lot of units here in game number one of this best of five series. He's been showing us some phenomenal defensive play, but eventually I think the aggression here from Bjorn is a little too much. Widow Mines grabbing a Lurker as well, never a good feeling. Another Hatchery going to get cancelled this one without any contest at all, I believe. And then we just rotate up to the 12 o'clock. This base has seen trouble throughout this game, and once more it's going to go down as well. Raynor pulls away, gives it up, and it's not looking pretty here for our Zerg. Bjorn. Aggression from start to finish. Ever since his first Reaper has hit the battlefield, now these snipes are gonna seal the deal, I believe. Yeah, ever since his first Reapers came out, there it is. Bjorn has been in control of this match. Containing the creep, containing the army. Honestly, brilliant game right there from our South Korean Terran. Actually, I mean, just from the, the start, the first Reapers against those Zergans was ridiculous. And credit to yeah. Raynor, because coming back from even those links, like you might not think it's the biggest kills, but actually, it adds up, right? Those are the kind of things that really put you into troubling positions when aggressive attacks come after. And Reynor held on, he bought time, he'd survived, but Bjorn was relentless. And even when Bjorn made a couple mistakes, he didn't let himself kind of get worried by that. He kept it going, made great choices, and he saw the lurkers, he could have started up Ghost right away, and he decided, no, a little bit more aggression until you have a few more lurkers, then I'll turn it around. Great game. Yeah, yeah these Bane lanes. I think if Bjorn stays clumped up here, he target fires these Banes much easier. And that might have even just been game at that point. So, yeah, no, I'm with you. Madness at the start. There were a couple of really good Bane lane connections in this game, and that is not really something you can rely on as a Zerg. That mostly just comes down to the Terran making a small error. And we saw a few of those connections, almost allowing Raynor to get back into the game. I think that Bjorn probably wanted to win this game about 10 minutes earlier, 10 minutes sooner than he actually did, but I mean, he continued onwards with the aggression, man. The Reapers also early on, I think they got two creep tumors, yeah. which really slows down the advancement of the creep. Obviously in this game in total, we saw probably a hundred of them going down, but the first few are so important just to spread that creep a little bit further out. 
Yeah, denying it early made it the cleanup later so much easier, and that's why he had Reynolds so contained creep rise. Creep was never really an issue in this game for Bjorn. He was just on top of it the entire way through. A fantastic way to play out game number one. And winning Ancient Sister, and that's like one of the given maps for Zerg, or at least it's meant to be, where it's their choice. That's the one they go to. That's the one they feel good on. And mm -hmm. it's not that they can't win on a Dragon Scales or, you know, a bit of a tougher map like a Babylon. It's just that that's meant to be the one you take and you don't have to worry about as much. So now, Bjorn's got to be feeling great. That's a great map to win. It's a great start of the series. It's a long way to go against someone like Raynor, but he showed everything he needed to to be able to win this. Raynor taking a quick little peek right there at the trophy. Maybe game number one didn't quite go his way. We're no longer singing, though. He's poked a bear. <laughs> He's no longer singing. He's just between tracks, man. <laughs> yeah, maybe. He's just on the intro to track two. Yeah, honestly, really nicely played right there by Pion. This was uh, a game that he honestly had in control, right? Maybe the micro, especially after the Reapers, wasn't quite as flawless as he was probably hoping for. Either way, game number two, we're looking right here in the bottom right corner of Dragon Skills, inside of the main base of Raynor. In the top left-hand corner from the Shopify Rebellion, currently up 1-0 in this quarterfinal. This is Bjorn! And once again, we've got ourselves a barracks right over here at the front of his natural. This really is the new standard from at least a, a few of the top-tier Terrans, right? Not everybody is a huge fan of this. A lot of the European Terrans seem to favor just a more standard opener. A lot of the Koreans actually do as well, but Bjorn consistently going for the double barracks. And, you know, if you're Bjorn in this situation, I wouldn't really mind seeing even a third barracks going down. Yep, it plays a very different style of game, but it's absolutely something he can do, and that's what makes it so dangerous, because again, as Reno, it's so difficult to scout, it's so difficult to identify. This is a shorter map, and so two racks might just be the go-to here, because seeing a third rack is that much easier and that much quicker, so you can respond sooner. But it, just throughout the series, right, we've got a lot of games to go. If he opens up like this most games, there is 100% a good chance of him mixing it up, and again, it's just so dangerous to have that in your back pocket at every moment. Right, or not really mixing it up so far. Going standard hatch into a gas and then also a spawning pool. He'll be trying to defend whatever the Terran player is throwing at him. And honestly, props to him as well for defending for such a long time. I feel like the vast majority of Zerg players out there would have lost that game significantly earlier than he did. And only a very small mistake from Bjorn could have actually led to a, uh, a Raynor victory in that previous match, right? A lot of Zerg players would have crumbled under the pressure, but Raynor did show his speed in that game and he did stay on top of a lot of the attacks. 100 speed on the player cards, man. Yeah. They're not messing around, they're not joking. These guys are playing they just, against They Raynor. just looked at the, uh, the scores themselves as well, and Raynor gave me the thumbs up when he saw 100 for speed. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you got 100 for speed. Yeah. And again, they're voted on by the players, so these are the guys that have gone up against Raynor and just like, man, it's unfair. <laughs> you know, he's so much faster than anybody else. As the Reaper does come in, the Zerglings will start to dance around, and of course, this time around, we are hoping as Raynor he doesn't take as much damage from the initial Reapers, as he does lose one Ling, loses two. That's mm -hmm. actually kind of a big deal, because now he's going to lose three. three, and you've got two Reapers here. Yes, the Queen pops out, but this is where you kind of have to make a couple more Lings again against the you know three Reaper pressure. It just is that little bit of damage early that starts to add up. And there's two more barracks coming up inside of the main base as well of Bjorn. So he is once again ready to start piling on the pressure here shortly. We'll see some add-ons on those first two wrecks. One reactor, one tech left. We'll be seeing the Stimpak upgrade fired up shortly. And this is just going to lead towards a very similar style as we saw previously. I mean, so far, Raynor, I mean, he may be fast, but the micro on those links is not quite as perfect as we would like to see it. Nope. It's, uh, it's, just, it's just losing a little bit, and this is bad because this Queen is hurting as well, and if you start getting a Queen kill here, that would be really terrible for Reno. This is just three Reapers, you've got the Barracks follow-up, right? You've got Stim, you're going to have Combat Shields on the way. Reno can't take too much damage here, that really would be very, very rough for him. Evo Chamber coming up once again here for Reno. I'm assuming he will once more transition towards a quick plus one Carapace, and sometimes when that upgrade finishes up, suddenly those fights go heavily in favor of the Zerg. 
It's always difficult, though, just like in the previous game, for Reynard to figure out exactly what's going on. He does see these exposed tech labs and reactors here. That can be something. Okay, he snipes a few of those Marines. That can be something that you can try and exploit as a Zerg, but Reynard not going for a Roach Warren or anything hyper aggressive. Instead, he's just firing up the Carapace upgrade, and he'll once again try to defend. Rippers have a lot of options here. They can run out of a right. They can, of course, jump into the main of the Zerg as well. I mean, the main thing is just keeping the Zerglings over here. That gives your Marines a bit of a better chance to move across later. And I mean, he's putting damage on this hatchery. That adds up. That could be something to think about later. This time, Re Reynold oh. is way better at dodging the grenades. He moved out of that one very preemptively. He is still going to lose a few links here, but obviously it's not as disastrous as we saw earlier. Queen's in position, shuts down the jump into the main. Yeah. Reynold knew exactly what he had to do compared to game one. So this march right here from the Terran, though, to watch the Zerg's triangle base, to watch the start that Raynor has taken, is very short. That's a problem that you run into as a Zerg player on Dragon Skills when you're playing against this opener here from Bjorn. He just simply doesn't have to cross nearly as much terrain. He can knock on your front door very rapidly. And you already brought it up. He actually did put a lot of work on that hatchery with those Reapers. The Reapers were going to go down eventually anyways. They certainly did bring a bit of hurt to that hatchery. And yeah, that can definitely add up with this Marine push. And the nest isn't done just yet. The Marines are going to be here, like you said, in just a moment. They get across so quickly. And Reynold has to find a way to buy a bit of time and defend this. But because the Reapers did a lot of damage to this hatchery, it's already hurting, right? That's a lot mm -hmm. less HP the Marines have to go through to just to kill it. And that adds the pressure on that much sooner. It forces Bjorn to make a play. Oh, Reynold to make a play that much more quickly against Bjorn. Bjorn not going too quickly, though. He is going to move forward now. There has been a transfusion dropped here, as we are going to see our Marines jumping in. And again, the Queen's going to be some of the first targets. The Banelings are nowhere in sight. They're going to come in on the left side of the screen at some point. Now the Marines are going to get surrounded by these Lings. We stim one more time. We're just going to trade about well, what we can, but I think Reynold has got a good cleanup here as Bjorn gets a couple Banes, but that is every Marine taken down. Yeah, this is right before the plus one Carapace finished. Reynold is trying to buy as much time as possible for that upgrade to be done, hopefully before this attack was committed. But most importantly, he did clean that up. And that changes the tempo of this game drastically <laughs> if you compare it to the previous one. Is that another barracks? It is as well, isn't it? We're just going to keep on going into what seems like essentially a two base all in, right? No third mm. CC. We're just going to keep it going. Going to put the reactor on the barracks here because we're done with upgrades. Factory's going to get a tech lab. And we're just going to go pushing tanks, oh. medevacs, marines, two base. And I mean, the single engineering bay is a great, uh, you know, sign of this as well, because usually if you do any sort of macro play, it's double engineering bay. So Raynor's actually putting his money right now into Burrow, which is a very interesting upgrade. With double command center, you don't have a lot of scans available. And with an attack like the one that Bjorn is going for, I don't think he will really save up a lot of energy at all. Raynor doesn't really know exactly what he's playing against. He hasn't seen the third, well, command center or lack thereof. He doesn't know exactly how many wrecks there are inside of the main base of the Terran. But there is certainly a situation where Baneling landmines are going to be able to end this game in a heartbeat. No, absolutely. It's scary because then you're going to need to scan every time. And especially when you're a two base Terran, you don't have as many scans as usual, right? So scanning is actually much more of an issue than it is before. There's a nice grab of a few Marines here. Bjorn will continue down to the south side. And of course, he just needs to try and avoid those Baneling's or find those Baneling's. He'll get a bit of creep here. That's the fourth base of Reno. That'd be a great start to get a grab on that. But he's got to oh. be careful as Lings look for a counter. Okay, there is a siege tank out there somewhere, I believe. Overlords will end up going down. I don't think this fourth hatchery really matters that much. Okay, the siege tank is all the way on the right side. I think jumping on this Terran army in this location would be a mistake. Renner giving up on this base is definitely the right pull. All he needs is time. He needs to finish up the plus one melee. That one's finishing up in a few seconds. He also needs to, more importantly, finish up the centrifugal hooks upgrade. That's the Baneling speed. It's not done yet. We're probably about 20 seconds away or so. There's broad Banes over here as well. Very careful now, Bjorn. Yeah, he does not know about them as he moves up here. I think his escape is going to be in the medivacs, though, so he shouldn't have issues just yet. And we'll see if he wants to or when he's going to scan, because it feels like usually you would always scan into some of this creep spread at least, but not doing that just hey. yet. Another Baneling connecting at the end before we finally lift up and back away. Now we see those Banes burrowed. Uh, unfortunately, the tank is busy <laughs> elsewhere, so the Banes actually get to pull back and get out of there. Okay, Renner needs to push this back. There's still no third command center on the back of this. <laughs> Here come the links from the right side as well, and this push has been broken. 
but not over yet though, dropping the main base. I was gonna say, it might be broken down there, but that's because Bjorn was already up in the main, and he's gonna get unloaded here in full. He's gonna go after the lair, that's not really ideal. He's gonna fight a lot of these Lings, the Banes, taking a while longer to show up. Bjorn should just lift and get out eventually. He is going to do that, and he is pushing with reinforcements oh. now. He's not brought them across the map in a while, Ooh. but he's borrowed Bailey's. He's just going to go around the edge of them. Oh, <laughs> he has no idea. Okay, well, in the end, a couple of those Marines end up shooting at their own acid. So it's not quite ideal, but he's going to try once more. This position needs to be broken a second time. That siege tank spot on the right side of your screen is absolutely terrifying. Rainer's gonna... got 1-1 one, one done, though. He's, he's fired up 2-2. Two, two. Is that really what you need here? I, I mean, in a much longer game, yes. Does he have that much time? That's hard to say. He loses this base. His bottom side base just finished up. An Overlord farm must be protected. You can't let yourself get that supply block. That would be terrifying. It is going to force Bjorn now to go somewhere else because this base is on the bottom side. It's a bit further away from the usual pushing direction. But Bjorn is also going to drop a little bit himself. So he's got other plans. He might just go up into the main base as well. No, it looks like he's just going to straight up fall back. Or he is just going to get attacked. What are we going to do, Bjorn? Yeah, Jeez. he needs to do something. He can't just sit it's around right here. In about a minute or so from now, his main and his natural will start running out. So Raynor actually giving up those bases on the right side of the map and giving up that triangle third. He is ready. There's a, an infestation inside of his own main base with Zerklings running around there. All he really needs to do is just clean up this one attack that Bjorn is going for. Bjorn has got an awful lot of supply though, caught up in these meta effects. He decides to unload inside of the main base. Siege tank gets surrounded, no room in the plane anymore somehow. Yeah, the Marines loaded back into the wrong meta oh. so they go ate up all the space. There was no half empty meta vac to jump in there. So Bjorn will unload on the low ground, get a couple more kills, even sieging up. The drop on the left side, the Queens are positioned well to deal with that, and it's been the perfect amount as now. We are going to see Bjorn still trying to break his way into the main, but we are getting closer and closer to 2 2. That's going to be a yeah. massive aid to Raynor to close down this attack of Bjorn. I was questioning the 2 2 research here earlier, but if he manages to finish that, the power spike is going to be tremendous. He's not going to wait for it, however. He decides to surround that siege tank on the low ground. It will end up going down. Another tank in the corner of his main base. Raynor forced to defend. Base in the center, also in a little bit of trouble. Not the most important expansion right here for Raynor, though, but Bjorn is running out of cash. He doesn't have a lot of minerals anymore. Raynor is just moving around so well. He's so preemptive towards each and every one of Bjorn's attacks. He's doing such a good job of just not allowing him to take control of this game. As the tanks go down, Bjorn's going to lose a lot of his pushing power. Behind this, he did build a third CC, an armory, engineer in Bay 2. He's realized that this attack is not going to end the game, but this is such a late time to start trying to do everything else and macro and up. There's a little Zerkling as well, burrowed underneath that third base location. Bjana's gonna need to scan that spot. He's already running out of minerals here, and well, any scan right now is expensive. Got a little bit of energy available right here, though. 50 energy is needed for a scan. There you go, could have been a mule. Yep, just a little bit of annoyance, right? A little bit of a delay, cost him as much as possible. Raynor droning up here, going to start feeling comfortable for the first time in a long time, because even if he was cleaning up these attacks, it's never over until it's over. But now Bjorn has really stopped. Raynor is going to get to four bases, an infestation pit. These are just things he never really thought about until now. So it's great to be able to get there. Even Burrowed Banes in the main to stop drops. Mm -hmm. It's such a cool little play. You don't see it a lot, but it's the perfect little choice here because it's the kind of thing you can run headfirst into as Bjorn who's going to go and play yeah. around the edges. Wow. Bjorn doesn't know it, right? He doesn't know where all of those units are. He's got no vision of it at all. He's managed to just barely walk past those Baneling mines a few times already. This game could have been over minutes ago if he did accidentally step in the wrong place at the wrong time. Either way, do you think we're going to see an attack though here coming out of Raynor? He's been playing very defensively for a long time. He's got a killer economy right now. Do you think he's brave enough to go for an attack? Yeah, it's a great question because it feels though as he maxes out, yeah, you kind of want to, but then Bjorn is set up defensively now. Like Bjorn has given up sort of attacking. So Raynor's got to believe he has a lot to be able to kind of break through Bjorn, otherwise this might be a very bad decision. Off pre, pre-split, tanks everywhere, all around the corners and on the ledges. Yeah, it, it's a tough call. I, I do feel like you don't necessarily want to sit back forever as Raynor, but picking your time to fight is very important as well. I wonder if Bjorn might just be sending it soon as well. Three bases, yeah. five SCVs, Libs on the way kind of suggests he's just going to go for one final push. And that kind of means that as Raynor, you do just want to be defensive. Yeah, his plus two, plus two upgrades here are finishing up very soon for his bio army, aka pretty much his entire army. A lot of these units are going to hit a big power spike shortly. Raynor teching up a little bit slowly towards that hive deck. You'll probably get Adrenal Glands, 3 3 research, maybe even a hive transition or ultras. He's got uh, a lot of options to choose from, but of course, if he doesn't attack, he's also giving Bjorn a ton of time to crawl himself back into this game. Yeah, Bjorn's army is going to be massive as well because he's only on 55 workers, so yeah. if he does max, 
That's going to be like a terrifyingly sized army. That is going to be one of the advantages Bjorn can play with here to kind of make it so that he can do this off of three bases. There's a lot of choke points on this map too. It's a dangerous one to actually attack on here. Bjorn has already shown us a few of those uh, siege tank locations, but there are certainly a few more as well in this area of the map that he can make use of. Snipes a few of the creep tumors, decides to back up once again. Liberator's moving on over towards the bottom left-hand corner. Rainer poking forward here, trying to get some damage in. Decides to play it very conservatively and backs off once again. Yep, Bjorn just gonna finish off this extract. He's been here for a while. Obviously, he's trying to get the main push across while also defending the potential counterattacks. There's a couple of bird pains right there, so we are gonna stim up a larger army. Raynor kind of pulls the trigger in. I don't like that. That's a lot of dead banelings. I just don't feel like he found too much value out of this. Still Liberator's going on in the corner. Bjorn gonna run back one more time. Now a single bailing, he scans yeah. and kills it, but that's gonna hurt a lot of his army. And that's the kind of thing that's really annoying because now you need some time to back away and not let other bailings connect in on you. This army from Bjorn, man, it's looking absolutely terrifying. Hive at this point is done for the Zerg player, but does he have enough time to really get any of those upgrades out? Raynor's still just playing defensively, playing this as safely as he possibly can, not really taking any chances. I'm not entirely sure if it's the best choice here for Raynor, as he's now going to be forced to fight once again, and he decides to go into the choke point. Yep, this is going to be one of those situations where Bjorn has to split well, because he doesn't have that much splash damage, but he is killing a lot of what's there. He's killing drones in the corner too. Bjorn going to set up in the front still. Lurka Den on the way from Raynor. Bjorn really is on the biggest timer he's been on yet in this game. If a Lurka Den finishes and Lurkas come out, Bjorn's army really is not made to fight that. Raynor's going to push down here one more time, try and scare Bjorn off a little bit, leaving the Marauders in front to tank. Some Liberators will come to reinforce this. The Banes keep on chasing, but the Marines are splitting well. As Raynor continues through, he might just have too much on the ground. The Hydras are continuing forward also, and they're going to be able to clean up all the tanks. The Liberators will fall soon after. There's a tiny bit of bio remaining, but it's not enough from Bjorn. Raynor is gonna stampede through on Dragon Scales. GG is called. Raynor gets a point on the board. Excellent game right there by the Italian Zerg, playing it very patiently to the point where I was like, okay, maybe this is a little too much. I know back in the day, sometimes you would get a little bit overly eager, a little bit too aggressive. This game, man, so patient, so methodical, brilliant match. No, absolutely. He, uh, he really just didn't take a, a bad fight, really, right? Like, he just always engaged and disengaged. And I think the main thing, he was so quick to go anywhere Bjorn was heading to. Bjorn didn't get to unload any of his drops comfortably. He didn't get to kind of sit behind a mineral line all of a sudden. Just very well played by Reyno. This was just a great moment as well, where Bjorn just didn't yeah. really have anything to do but to fight. I did wonder, like, a moment before this, if Bjorn could have gone in, like, a little bit sooner. He waited a few seconds, and mm -hmm. sometimes those few seconds can mean a lot. I love this play, by the way, as well. Also, the rocks coming down, blocking a lot of the Ling Bane from wrapping cute. around. Cute little stuff, but obviously not enough. Raynor did continue to hold on. He continued to survive. And again, he played that kind of timing game. Eventually here, he was about to have a look, because so Bjorn kind of needed to do something. He set up too aggressively. Raynor was able to capitalize. And we have got a heck of a series on our hands as it ties up 1-1. Yeah, Bjorn decided to delay that third command center for as long as he could. Right, at some point he decided to plant one down just because he didn't really have another choice anymore. He was running out of resources right around the 10, 11, 12 minute mark, especially with mules. Terran will start running out of minerals in their main and in their natural, and Bjorn needed to do something. His plan was to win the game before he absolutely needed it, and he honestly still made it look pretty close, but Raynor never really making any mistakes in the back of this, and well, he manages to even up the score. I like Bjorn's idea, right, where I was, you know, pull back, oh, I'm, I'm clearly in a lot of trouble. So, hey, let's take a, let's take like a third base instead. You know, he realized he wasn't going to end it. And then off the third base, he's like, well, what is my best chance still? Maybe still just one big attack. This map is designed for that. So let's just send it. And it did make it kind of close. You know, one worse fight for Reyno, and it could have really been disaster for him. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Some cool choices from Bjorn. Obviously, we are set up now one and one, heading to a game three in just a couple of moments. And we'll see who will be able to take the lead in the series as Raynor, of course, was uh, very happy taking down Maru on the first mm -hmm. day of this event as well. He looked pretty good there, man. But Bjorn is just a different beast in terms of how he plays. Like, he plays quick, he plays aggressive. These Reaper openings get so much done. It's terrifying to play against him. All right, so Bjorn ended up winning on the map. That was Raynor's choice. Raynor winning on the map. That was Bjorn's choice. That means that everything is open once again as we are loading into game number three. That one will be taking place on Grespa. Now, I know the man right here in the top left -hand corner of the map is not necessarily the biggest fan of playing a macro game against Terran on here. We're looking inside of the main base of Raynor.
In the bottom right, our Blue Terran player from the Shopify Rebellion. This is Bjorn. Once again, low ground barracks right over here for Bjorn. Now, a lot of Zerg players have been avoiding this map against the top tier Terrans because of long, drawn out macro games. If these games go to a split map scenario, it's pretty easy for Terran to take five bases, and it's very hard for Zerg to take one of the bases that is considered to be one of the Terrans. That's usually how Zergs win in the late game. When the map gets completely mined out, it's very difficult for them on this map to steal one of the bases of the Terran. Late game Terran armies, very cost efficient as well, and Raynar. He mentioned a few times that he's not a huge fan of playing this map. He vetoed it earlier on into this tournament as well. A lot of the Korean Zergs do still seem to like playing this one as well, but yeah, I'm curious to see if that changes his strategy at all. Does that mean he will be playing this more aggressively just to try and avoid that late game? Well, Gaspil Hatch already suggests aggression or at least a very solid defense, right? You're going to have Ling Speed much sooner. This can negate some of the power of those Reapers. There is a world where you can maybe play Roach that don't know if we're that extreme. And honestly, I'm not sure if that's even a great idea. Because Bjorn is so good at buying time and doing what he needs to to end up in a good, strong position when it comes to Roach builds against his Reapers. All right, he's going to scout it over here and Raynor's going to be happy to find this. He does indeed have that quick Zerkling speed upgrade. He still has a little bit of gas coming in as well. I don't know exactly what he's planning on using that gas for. We have seen Baneling busts, we have seen Roach rushes, we've seen a lot of aggression on this map from Zergs lately. But we'll have to see exactly what he's going to be using that for. Bjorn is not expecting Metabolic Boost anytime soon here. I mean, at this point, he sees the timing of the hatchery, so that should give him all the information that he needs, and he scouts that indeed the gas is still mining. Bjorn, when he feels like something is working, will just not let it go. It's going to be the same with this build, right? Extra racks on the way as the Reapers are coming up, the reactor and the tech lab building through. He knows that this is going to be an earlier pool. He knows he might have to be a bit more passive with the first few Reapers, and yet he's still very happy to add on a barracks, add on two, <laughs> and just go from there. There it is, by the way. We've got ourselves a bailing nest on the production tab. So Raynar, not faking the amount of gas income that he was getting, he is simply going to go for a Zerkling bailing bust. This is one of the oldest Zerg build orders. This is something that somebody came up with back in 2010. Not very popular at all anymore these days, but well, Raynor is going to bust it out. I'm a little bit worried, man. Four racks, lots mm -hmm. of Marines. Like, there is a good potential that you bust through, and there's just too much Terran, right? There's a second uh, layer of the wall off, too, right? Yeah, he, he's walling the high ground as well, which isn't oftentimes the case in this scenario. You would just wall the low ground, and wall into the main isn't there. But that means that Bjorn has tools to deal with this. Yes, it's got potential to work, but I'm not immediately like, oh, this is over. And there's even a bunker coming yeah. up behind. Bjorn is very aware that something's happening. And this is potentially terrifying for Reyno. If this doesn't work out, it's heavily committed. He needs to do serious damage. Ten banelings are a lot. But I think Bjorn is pretty well set. Yeah, you need about five banelings to go through one of those supply depots. And he needs to go through at least two of them in order to break the main base. That bunker is going to be very difficult as well to deal with. Here come the Lings and the Banes. Bane Lings will already be able to roll down that supply depot. He decides to commit to the bunker over here, which I guess is pretty good, but is that enough SCVs that he's going to be able to take down? Yeah, I think this might be good enough because the bunker goes down pretty quickly and Bjorn lost a lot of his units here. Now he does have that second wave of the wall off and he did waste a lot more of the Banes. I think Bjorn expected this to go a little bit better for him. He's going to give it the low ground completely right now, which means a couple more SCVs go down. And from here, I think Reynor can drone up. This was enough. Bjorn, maybe even just getting a couple more SCVs on the bunker a little sooner. A bit more of a repair by a few more seconds. Might have been good enough. I think the one thing he didn't manage to do was drop the Reaper grenades. Yep. I really expected him to, once the depots were down, drop the grenades through that pathway just to slow down the advance and to split up the units of the Zerg. I think that might have been something to help him out a lot. He's preparing now as though there's wave two of the Banelin bus coming. This wall off is obviously pretty extreme. We can see it's not. Reynolds doing the right thing. He's just building up drones and he's going to get ready for a more macro focused game. Bjorn will lean on his stim pack. He'll lean on his upgrade and the ability to trade with these Terran units a bit further down the line to help him out. Yeah, speaking of stim pack, he had that started up in the natural, but obviously he had to abandon those two barracks and he now brought them into the main base. That means that he needed to restart up the tech lab research. It's going to be a while until it finishes. One, of course, of the strongest upgrades in the game. There's the Evo Chamber once again coming up. Raynor does have a decent amount of creep, but I really think he needs a little bit more. There's certainly going to be an attack coming out of the Terran player here. I'm a little surprised, though, that Bjorn hasn't actually tried yet to retake his natural expansion. I mean, yeah, there's a bunch of links coming out, but he's not even really trying to move down that ramp. 
I think he's absolutely terrified that there's just another round of Ling Bane very ready to <laughs> this go. This is so dark. <laughs> it's it's not right, but like maybe he's just played against Dark Team and Slimes. He only has 12 Marines. If there's like four or five Banelings, there's a yeah. lot of Lings. It forces you to split up. You can't get the target fire off. It could be a disaster, so he's just going to play it patiently. At least with Stim, he has a much better chance with these Marines collected together to trade out, and that should be the point where he doesn't have to wait around any longer. Okay, well, Stimpak, it's finished up at this point. We're going to start marching down the ramp once again. I think Bjorn would like to get aggressive here, but it's very difficult for him to pull that off. Links at this point, okay, they're just checking how many units do you have. Turns out there's enough Marines to take that low ground once again. Any sort of Marine kills here would be great for the Zerg player, just making sure that the Terran is delayed for whatever attack they want to go for. Everything is going great right here, though, for the Zerg. He decided to go for the plus one carapace once again. If he finishes that upgrade, now this is not quite ideal, but if he finishes that upgrade, the Terran pushes are going to be much weaker. So many drones ahead. He's almost 20 workers ahead right now. And obviously the Terran will start to play catch up a little bit with two SCVs producing at a time. There's a good reason to always produce SCVs. Now you have the natural. It feels like so much of this for Bjorn is going to come down to this incoming attack. Couple medevacs, stim, combat, plus one attack. Just get across and see what we can do. There's potential. There's no baneling speed, right? So there's always that potential to target fire down banes and for the Marines to perhaps overwhelm, but uh, it's, it's going to be difficult. Raynor knows what he's doing. He knows he's got a good drone lead, and I think he knows he's honestly on a safe enough unit count right now. He needs to fire up the bailing speed here as soon as the lair finishes up. That's one of the best upgrades that Zerks can get. Bjorn has uh, got himself a step back upgrade done. Just a few seconds away from finishing up combat shields as well. He already has the plus one infantry weapons. There suddenly the Marines find a shield in their back pocket. They're like, wait a second. I could have had plus 10 HP this entire time. Well, grab the shields, it's time to fight. Yeah, it really is as well because the like I say, with the medivacs out, the upgrade's done. This is your power spike. We're going to see Reno immediately trying to counterattack. These Marines need to have a deep oh. raise. This is going to be brutal. There's going to be a lot going down. Bjorn has to pull the SEVs, get a few more Marines involved. He's going to have a few coming from the high ground. He will commit across the map. If yeah. there's any amount of balance here, it's going to make it tough. Does Bjorn have that critical mass of Marines to fight this? He has to split away. Let's see if he can do this. Marines on the high ground taking damage. He lifts up. He drops down. He just doesn't have that many left over. 18 SCVs dead on the other side. Rain will pick the perfect amount of units to counterattack with, yeah. making sure he would be safe at home. That was perfect for him. Pushing forward that creep just far enough to be able to actually defend that. The time is ticking, or the clock is ticking at this point in time. Now here for Bjarnasi. Is soon going to be playing against somebody who's got a good amount of creep spread and who will also have that bailing speed upgrade. Centrifugal Hooks is absolutely massive. Raynor is going to have a much easier time defending those Marines on creep. I mean, I just don't really see a way out. Bjorn is going to have to micro like an absolute god. Yeah, he really is. As we see these Marines, I mean, there's just no way. He starts Easy. to split, but he knows it's not enough. Raynor gets it done. That was not going to be an easy game, man, because that bunker was up. I felt like Bjorn had yeah. the setup. He just needed to do a little bit more, and a little bit of a better trade in that low ground could have changed so much of what the follow-up ended up being. For sure. He scouted the main base. He saw right away that there was additional gas income. So he saw the timing of the hatchery, and he knew exactly how to respond and scout the main base. And even though he saw this coming in from a mile away, and he did make a, a good amount of defenses, I think you're right when he didn't throw the Reaper grenade right over there on that supply depot location, and those Zerglings and Banelings just walked in for essentially free. That was uh, the beginning of the end. Yeah, this this moment really felt like, like I say, just a couple more SCVs on the bunker. I know that's scary because there's Banelings there, right? Mm -hmm. But it's just those little things that was so close to maybe being perfect. This was beautiful from Reynold. Honestly, just yeah. the right amount of Lings because he was so safe back at home. He took no real damage. This is just enough Banes to push this back. He's got that little bit of creep spread because he's controlled this game. It was everything he needed. Yeah, just, just really well calculated from Raynor. Great choice of build, great execution in the end, and great follow-up just to make sure there's no way back into the game from the Terran. Beautiful game. All right, so that now means that Raynor has a chance to move on to the semifinals if he manages to win one more map. Yep, that's all it takes. Of course, Raynor wants to move through there. He would be playing the winner of Serral or Classic later. Obviously, it could be an all basilisk semifinal there. Hmm. It's, uh, I, I feel like these guys as well on the bottom side have got to feel good because I feel like whoever comes through this bottom side is probably the favorite going into the finals as well. So. Yeah. You know, a lot's on the line in these matches. Reynor looking to get it done in his first match of the day. He's looked good this weekend. We had questions coming into this weekend about Reynor. You know, online he hadn't been looking so hot. He'd been moving around countries a lot from one mm -hmm. place to another. But it really feels like he brought his absolute best so far, and he needs to keep on doing it.
All right, here we go. We are looking inside of the main base of the man who's got a chance to go to the semifinals of this tournament. Make some noise for Raynor. And in the top right hand side on his final life, let's hear some noise for Shopify, Rebellions, Bjorn. Well, Bjorn once again, going for the low ground barracks. He does this time and time again. It's not really what we consider to be the quote unquote standard in this matchup. And Raynor, you know what? He's thinking the same thing. He's like, well, he doesn't seem to be too flexible right now with his openers. I will once again go for the quicker gas, quicker spawning pool, and then eventually an expansion. And against this particular build, it is fantastic. Yeah, good adaptation from earlier in the series. I think the Ling Bane version of kind of aggression from this is really nice. Obviously, you don't necessarily have to be aggressive. You could just say, cool, faster Ling speed, defend the Reapers much more easily. This is a three racks from Bjorn. So this is the first time he's bringing this out in the series. It's been two racks every single time until now, at least on the Reaper portion of the game. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of a different approach. We'll see exactly what Reynold does with the gas pool, if he is going to get aggressive in some manner, because Bjorn definitely wants to step this aggression up a notch early. So once again, Raynor is going to be able to get that link speed out a little bit faster. Curious to see if he is going to go into the bingling nest once more or if he's going to pull the drones out of gas. It looks to me like he's still getting at least a little bit of gas income. He's leaving the drones in once again. There's a few different pivots that he could make, but I think he has to go for some sort of aggression, right? You wouldn't normally leave these drones in gas if you're just trying to get the, the link speed out. Yep. No, there's definitely something else beyond this, but... I'm not sure how good roaches are. So, like, if it's Balans, I'm kind of, I'm kind of down. But the roaches are something that Bjorn has shown the ability to deal with with this build on repeat. Even though it's mm -hmm. kind of meant to be good, Bjorn has it figured out, and that's why he can do this so reliably and so predictably. <laughs> as this Reaper dives hard into the base, he wants to scout of the gas and he wants to know what's going on. So make sure he gets that information before jumping out, and this allows him to make decisions a bit further down the line, of course. 100%. Yeah. Roaches can be a little bit dicey. Roaches and Ravagers do tend to work well. It's just that Bjorn is so good at that Reaper control, as we've already seen in this series, that he can slow it down so much if Zerg decides to go for some sort of aggression. Looks like Reiner, by the way, did pull out of gas here eventually, so I'm not sure exactly what the plan was. He must have seen the timing of that third Reaper and realized that he's playing against somebody who might be playing three wrecks. So whatever he had planned, he's apparently not keen to give it a try against this particular build from Bjorn. And Bjorn saw the gas count, right? So he might just say, okay, you committed to the scout, you got the scout, now I'm not going to do anything. And maybe you over-defend, maybe you put a bunker down. It's yeah. not efficient from Raynor, but he's hoping that that inefficiency cancels out based on what Bjorn does in response to it. Exactly, that's what we saw in the previous game as well. Bjorn, this time around, not going for the double barracks just yet inside of the main base. I mean, that'd be difficult to pull off if you already have the three that are done. That is a whole lot of Reapers, though. What exactly are you going to do with all these Reapers? Once Zerg gets a little bit of creep out. Well, that's what you think, but I saw Bjorn play against the laser the other day, and he was with Medivacs, and he had Reapers in the Medivacs, and also it's <laughs> jumping up and down. I think that might have even been this map, so maybe there's something of a plan. He is going to head down the right-hand side and to see what he can start doing. Stimpak starts up. Looks like we're going to follow up into pretty regular bio behind this, as the Reapers are going to find some of these lings, and that's not a good fight for Raynor. Time to pull away. Hello. And he's actually losing a few more of these lings, so a little bit of a mistake. Shouldn't be so much that Bjorn can just break through or anything as we do drop a couple grenades down, make sure we can pick off this creep tumor. And now he's just going to go put some damage on this hatchery, forces a response out of Raynor. Yeah, every two Zorklings that you see out on the map right now could have been a drone. And well, Raynor is going to need quite a few of them to push all of his back. Honestly, with this amount of Reapers, you can even start contesting the hatchery itself. Those queens are also not safe. Bjorn trying to see if he can still get a lot of value out of this early game of his. And you know what? I think the third hatchery may be in some trouble here. I think so too. This is just a situation where obviously Reno never really necessarily knew exactly what this was. And because of that, maybe he has just been a little bit underprepared for it. Plus you lose a few extra links. The hatchery will mm -hmm. not die, but Bjorn also made sure to maintain all of his Reapers. And that means that they are still a threat. They can combine with the follow-up Marines and be even more powerful on the push. Double Evo Chamber here coming up as well for Rainer. So he is aiming to go for the double upgrades here, whereas Bjorn is going to hit a power spike here momentarily. He'll be going into the combat shields as well after this Stimpak upgrade. Stimpak, of course, amazing. Now, it's not going to be very beneficial right here for those Reapers. I don't know for maybe their friends being a little bit more powerful, but I mean, Reapers with Stimpaks would be, <laughs> be kind of crazy. 
That would that'd be a little bit unfair. <laughs> I think we'd see a lot more Reapers, believe it or not. <laughs> Stim does uh, finish up here in a few moments' time. Starboard's not far from being done, and Bjorn can definitely get across and try and do something. Again, especially against double upgrades, there's going to be a very late Baneling speed. And there's going to be a little bit of time where Bjorn has plus one against zero, zero. Mm -hmm. So a few different points he can maybe try and take advantage of. And again, that third hatchery being low HP makes it an easy target when those larger armies show up. It's all about the tempo advantage, right? Usually the tempo advantage, it controls the creep, it controls the Zerg. At this point, yeah, Pion has been roaming the map, but these Reapers, they're not Hellions. They're not really capable of just diving in and always being a threat. They can't really step onto the creep, like, for example, Hellions could. So we haven't actually seen a lot of Hellion play at all during this tournament, which is a little bit surprising because it's so common in general in this particular matchup. But I'm really liking the creep threat here for Raynor already. The further he can push this, the better it's going to be against this attack that's coming in right now. That being said, though, you brought up the plus one upgrade. Combat shields are already finishing here as well by the time that this army gets across. 1-1 one, one for Zerg will not be done. Yeah, no, just the little things, right? The timing here from Bjorn could be very scary. The creep definitely helps Raynor out, though. That may dissuade Bjorn from pushing as far forward. That's another Overlord. Raynor is going to have a couple mm -hmm. on the way, but just little supply blocks, right? They add up. More Overlords being needed. Counterattack will be dealt with well. It's a wall off. There's a tank. There's Marines. So Bjorn going to be just fine right there as he is going to push up here initially. He has grenades to try and slow down the advance of these Banelings, but it's not being good enough just yet. Some of these Banes getting dangerously close to the clump of Marines. We have to lift up in the end as the Lings come from the other side. And Raynor, for in the moment, is going to shut this down. There's the bailing speed as well. That's the only thing I was a little bit concerned for. Raynor waiting up till that engagement was done before he fired up that upgrade. Honestly, excellent cleanup right there by the Italian Zerg. Trying his very best to secure two fourth bases. Now, he could call one of them a fourth, the other one a fifth. Uh, but I really think he's only really trying to take one of the two. If Terran decides to commit to killing one, he still has a backup plan. And Otherwise, it'll be treated as a macro hatchery just to increase the production. This is still a scary attack, though, here for Bjorn. He's got his upgrades finished. He's still getting more and more as well in the engineering base. And these siege tanks, man, they don't mess around. They do not. And big shots on the Bailing's going to get a few more. And almost all the Bailing's don't get anywhere close to anything. That's a big start. And this base is going to go down. So you can call this one the fifth. And we'll call the bottom one the fourth. <laughs> as this is going to just straight up die. But that is troublesome. That's a lot of Bailing's already. Bjorn is taking a third behind this. So while this push is committed, he doesn't have to win the game off it. He does have a more reasonable follow-up than he's had in earlier games. Beautiful target firing right there by Bjorn. You can, of course, manually target with the siege tanks, and he did that brilliantly, trying to target fire down that clump of Banelings before they could get even remotely close to those, uh, those Marines. And Bjorn manages to clean up that base relatively easily. Now, 1-1 one, one is done. The uh, roly-poly upgrade here, so triple hook's also done right here for Raynor. But this will get a bit easier, but by no means is Bjorn going to let, uh, let go of this pressure. Nope, I don't think so. He's going to get another Siege Tank here. He likes this position because it's difficult for the Zerg to attack down into him. The wraparound takes a while because you've got to go right out into the center of the map. There was a couple lips moving around in position as well. Not sure where they're up to. There oh. they are. As if on cue in the picture in picture, going to get some drones and just be an annoyance while this hatchery is essentially going to go down, right? Remember, it was low from early and it's going to start dropping. He's not going to go for it. He has to fight the Lings. The Lings actually coming up through the top side as well. He needs to stim those Marines. No, Grano just backs away. Happy to have saved the hatch and still losing drones to Liberators. Yeah, these Liberators are actually super nice here for the Terran player. Renner was trying to set up a surround there through the top section as well of that previous engagement. The Queens, though, were occupied down at the, or I guess over here on this high ground. They're now all the way down, down over at the fourth base, and that means that this is going to be the end of the third. Yep, that goes down. That means we're working off three bases for the moment. There's a new hatchery coming up in a forward position, but that one doesn't have a lot of creep in front of it, so that could be an easy target for Bjorn. It's a different location to where he's pushed before. But it's going to be a very easy push from the forward third base he takes. So, yeah, uh, as he kind of runs out of things to do on this side, maybe he could jump up into the main a little bit, but yeah, Reynor definitely in a, a little bit of trouble, right? Like, this pressure mm -hmm. is still going on. He needs one big cleanup, and he might get it because he's going to have 2-2 two, two upgrades way sooner than Bjorn, and he's also soon introducing that burrow play that we saw Bjorn have some troubles against earlier as well. Yeah, Bjorn really beautifully playing the map layouts though, right? Like putting those siege tanks in locations that are difficult to break. Now this location certainly not easy, but is there enough Marines to actually support all of these siege tanks? It turns out the answer is no. Bjorn wanted to continue pushing inside of the main base of the Zerg player, but Raynor manages to clean it up before it would cause even more trouble. 
This fourth hatch here in the middle of the map is very exposed, but at the very least, Raynor is going to be able to finish it. I wouldn't mind, though, seeing a couple of creep tumors in that area. Yeah, ju just anything to create a little bit more map control and that more forward position would be amazing. This oh. new hatchery probably is going to get instantly cancelled or killed. Yep. Raynor doesn't get to it in time, so 300 minerals down the drain. We're going to lose this extractor as well. And the Marines just lift up. So Bjorn keeping this drop over here keeps that little bit of pressure available and is going to be able to, well, use that to kind of emphasize some attacks on the right side as well. Looks like he's just going to go for two separate sets of drops right now and also starting that fourth command center really readying up just much later stages of the game here. Bailings, Bailings, there we go. Once again, Bailing Landmines coming into play. It's not something we very commonly see, but more and more Zergs are mixing it in. I mean, it's a pretty cheap upgrade, right? Only 100 minerals, 100 gas. You can get it right at the start of the game. And getting it at the start of the game would be a little crazy, but it is one of those things where I think in hindsight, we'll probably call it a no-brainer. And we'll be a bit surprised it wasn't used more often in the meta in the past. But Bjorn does get caught off guard, and some of that tempo does get shut down. And we having the bigger push, though, down the right-hand side. Couple of Widow Mines coming up. He switched into Mines. This has continued to be extremely Ling Bane heavy, so... We'll start ahead in towards that now. There's a Hydra down on the way from Reno as well, so he's also attacking up. He's currently got a massive counter attack around the top side. Let's see what Bjorn's defense is like. Very good, honestly. The Widow Mine might not do much, but the tank does a lot. The Warlock does a lot. And at the moment, we can sit behind this base and just stop the mining from here. This is not a common base for a Zerg to take this early, so the Terran being able to walk up behind it mm -hmm. is kind of why. It's, it's kind of a weak place to be. Yeah, normally there's lurkers out at this stage in the game when this base is taken by the Zerg, but... None of that is even remotely close here. Raynor once again defending whatever he can, just like we saw in game number one of this series. Trying his very best to not be broken, but Bjorn, I mean, he is everywhere. He's trying to be so aggressive. Always letting those Marauders be in the front as well, so they can tank some of the Bane lanes as they move through. Widowmine trying to reposition. Bjorn has to load up. The Widowmine won't get much, but he'll go to the high ground, deny that base once more. And even that's obviously a pretty big win. Raynor has never really been comfortably on four bases for a while at this stage, so... At some point, you expect lava to become an issue, even just the amount you can mine to become an issue. Bjorn's finally up, uh, finishing upgrades as well, so he's going to be equal in upgrades, which has been a long time since that's been the case. Plus two, plus two, finishing up right now for the Terran player. 2-2 two, two was done ages ago here for Raynor. Once again, uh, these Banelings will get spotted. Planetary Fortress coming up over there at the three o'clock position. That's a very interesting fourth base to take, not one that we normally see, I wonder if it's something that Raynor is even really considering. Normally it's that base at the top or the one in the center of the map. Now there are a couple of paintings over here, burrowed on the ground. Bjorn, you gotta be so careful. I know, he's being pretty good at scanning, but oh. there is a couple. It's a couple of the Widow Mines gets them low, which means they're so easily picked off, of course. Nice little catch from Raynor as he is gonna dive forward here a little bit. There is a Widow Mine that can do a lot, but he split away from it. The one Ling in the front took the shot, and that's all he needed to make sure that wasn't a bigger explosion. The Morphin Balans will be cancelled. He's going to come around the other side at the same time. Couple of these tanks not fully set up just yet. I don't think Bjorn can get the position he needs here. How far does Reynolds want to chase now? The tanks are gone. Is it worth chasing off creep? He seems to think yeah. so. He's still getting Balan connections. I was expecting Bjorn to maybe just lift up a little sooner. He is going to do a diving down the right side. Let's see if he can do enough over here. But Reynolds already back across in this direction as well. Hydras are once again available here as well for the Zerk player. He's not really been comfortable in this game at all, but Bjorn also does not seem to be on the verge of breaking him, right? Normally, we see a Terran player attacking these scenarios and they just push forward the entire time. And then at some point, the Zerk crumbles. I don't think Raynor is quite in that position in this game. This is still one bad engagement for Bjorn. Uh, away from being an absolute disaster for him. Now the Planetary Fortress, though, does get found, but does this mean that the Zerk army gets trapped? Well, we are going to see these Balins on the left side, maybe not quite being enough. The Marauders in the front will help to soak those up, and some of these Hydras, I thought that was a given chase, but I think he saw the burrowed Baneling, yeah. so he just backed away for a moment. That was actually huge. It saved Reyno like four or five Hydras, right? Ooh. So being able um, to do that. Not actually lifting up his left hand right there off of the mouse and actually shaking his wrist out. Bjorn has had some wrist issues throughout this tournament this weekend so far. I really hope that, well, these very high intense games are not gonna make his wrist any worse than it has been over the last few days. He requested a pause earlier on in this tournament as well. That was a little bit scary. Bio unloads, just gonna take the hatch on the left hand side. A couple of these widow mines still setting up as we do deny that base on the left. Beyond pushing down the right, Marauders in the front to tank. And he's got the mines preset as well to kite back into. Letting the Marauders put in the work here is absolutely the goal. He's gonna be pushed back on the left, but on the right side, he's honestly looking pretty strong. Oh. Marines are barely even joining in just yet. 
And it looks like Bjorn will push a bit further onto Creep this time around as well. Yeah, he boosts him to the main base at the same time too, in the picture in picture, trying to be aggressive inside of the main base of the Zerg. Okay, it does look like he will be able to pick that up and get on out of there just barely in the nick of time. Raynor though, going into a hive here. Lurkers are on the production tab and, well, even though in game one of this series, those lurkers did not necessarily save him as Bjorn just stimped straight into it. This game, it's a little bit different, right? The pacing is not quite as aggressive. Credit to Raynor, man. He is just always where he needs to be. Like, splitting these units up so consistently to respond to what the Terran is doing is oh. not easy. He's going to lose this base here. This is one of those times where he does get a little bit hey. split as you get buried bailings on the left-hand side. But yeah, I think what Reno is doing is very impressive. Beyond still keeping a lot of momentum in this game, but Reno doing his absolute utmost to stop this being meaningful. Oh, he's even got to go and take the golden minerals over here. Very interesting expansion pattern here from Bjorn. He's trying to take every single base on that right side of the map and to be as close to the Zerk as possible. Raynor doesn't want to be neighbors, though. He's been trying to push this back for a while already. Going into the Lurker tech right now, it's going to make defending these pushes significantly easier, at least in theory. Lings and Banes are very needed over here, though. We definitely are going to need a couple more Banes if Terran decides to reinforce his angle. Wooden Mine and Burrows tries to reburrow there. Wooden Mine on the top actually does get to go off the next couple. Might do something. We do push in on the top. There's a couple lurkers, but I think that's engageable for Bjorn. Similar to what we saw in Ancient System. It's just not quite enough for the amount of bio. So we get this base yet again. The Terran base, Terran base 5 will be coming up while the Zerg's base 5 is going down. Okay, Ghost Academy coming up right now. It's a little bit later than I would have liked to see it. And at this point, Raynor is going to be pretty happy, actually, that this new base from the Terrans right over here. Planetary Fortress finishes up. Now, downside of a planetary is that you can't lift it. Command Center's orbitals, you can fly them into the skies. Not the case, however, with that Planetary Fortress. There's a big push through the center of the map, but Raynor seems to be all over that tool. Although this drop right here from the left side is brilliant here by Bjorn. He's target firing down a hatchery. He's not going to be able to get it for now, but bruising it is still very nice. Yeah, a couple of lurkers doing a lot, obviously, defensively and offensively on this Planetary. The left-hand side attack is going to get pushed away. Raynor's supply is dipping a little bit. Bjorn is taking a bit of control supply-wise but he still needs to be able to clean up these lurkers. It's going to get easier because ghosts are coming onto the map. As it looks like Bjorn has given up this gold base. He's just going to let this planetary fall. He stops repairing it, and he's just going to send those SCVs elsewhere. The supply count, though, heavily in favor right now of our Terran player from Korea. He needs to be careful. A one misengagement, and he's, gonna, he's just going to get shut down. Those lurkers, they don't mess around. Now, ghosts are nice. He does have quite a bit of money in the bank, too, but not a huge economy. Honestly, in the series so far, Bjorn has never really had that many SCVs available. Once again, opting to say that only about enough for three base saturation. Yep, no, it's always been, it's been low eco games, right? Just being that aggressive, been trading out this entire time. Do you see Bjorn able to get so far forward because of that for, uh, base being killed earlier? And these are morphing lurkers, they just about get to finish. Bjorn has so much bio here, you need something in front of these lurkers, of course. There's one on the right hand side as well, and I don't think Bjorn will push too much further forward here as he loads up a chunk of medivacs. They're going to go around the right hand side and just see if they can drop while well, the main force goes elsewhere. Okay, uh, one of the lurkers decided to go in for the counter attack as well. Raynor's supply count was rather low earlier. His well, Bank is still non-existent. Bjorn has already got a lot of money to actually replace this current army of his with. The creep spread here, though, has been pushed back so wonderfully, right? Really nicely done by Bjorn so far in this series, just constantly controlling that creep spread. I mean, the entire center is just the way it started, right? A lot of Widow Mines even still in that area, too. Yep, just leaving a lot of these around, just hoping they get good connections, right? Just annoying for the Zerg. You know, same as the Bird Bands, just annoying to mm -hmm. run over, hard to deal with. Can get a lot done out of nowhere. Just got to be super careful moving around the map, which is good because you don't want the Link, the Zerg just running around like a massive army here and a massive army there without being somewhat punished. This is a scary army, though. Raynor actually looking to go straight through the center of the map, it seems. He's got to clean up at least some of those units. Is there enough, though, for Bjorn to actually push back this amount of lurkers? The ghost count is growing. There's four of them coming up here at a time, but there's really not that many of them available just yet. Yeah, he has only four. He has got a couple lips coming out as well. There's not a lot of anti-air available as Bjorn is going to come in for the surround. He's going to try and fight these lurkers straight up with the bio, with the wraparound from the south, from the upper right. The lurker count is disappearing and Bjorn's going to clean it all up. Whew, that was an engagement and a half. So dangerous right there by Bjorn stimming into all of those units. There's more lurkers on the back of this. Raynor's inviting him to do that move a second time as well. Bjorn not going to take the bait this time, but what an engagement, man.
Turns out a circle is even better than a concave. <laughs> Absolutely. It was it was necessary. Against Lurks, you don't want to run in one direction. He made sure. The big thing as well was just not a lot in front of those Lurks. They weren't doing yeah. damage before the Terran got on top of them. And yeah, now Bjorn, of course, is going to have Ghost for future Lurker Wave. So he really survived the scariest part. Obviously, mm -hmm. Reynolds' economy has been in the gutter for a while. We know that. We've seen the bases die, and it's not been pretty. And I think finally, Bjorn is truly comfortably ahead in this game. What a roller coaster. <laughs> oh, Bjorn requesting a quick pause. His wrist has been bothering him over the course of this tournament, and yeah, I've seen him shake out his wrist a few times already during this game. Yeah, it's definitely been an issue for him, so we'll just have a few moments to see it when we get this resolved, and hopefully just a couple of quick seconds, because he's looking great in this game, right? Win this, we're going to a game five, and game five, I believe, would be on Babylon. Mm -hmm. Great terror map as well, so his hopes are definitely high if he can just keep his wrists together. Yeah, no, at this point, this game is uh, heavily in favor of the Terran player. He's in a very comfortable position, right? So he's been incredibly aggressive throughout this entire series, and obviously that forces you to constantly split up your units, try to create as much distance between your armies as possible. It's a very intense style to play, though. Rainer known for his speed, definitely the type of guy who will play at five, sometimes even 600 average actions per minute which, uh, well, comes down to about 8 to 10 buttons a second. These guys are incredibly quick, and in order to match that, you're obviously going to have to, t yeah, you're going to have to stay on top of it. All right. All right. We got a quick little video to buy some time here. We'll be right back. <laughs> Not really a surprise, but I think the strongest players are probably Cyril and Maru, as per usual. <laughs> I think the strongest player would be Cyril. Cyril and Maru. It's always a safe bet to say Cyril is the strongest player. Uh, I don't know, when I watch their play, they're, from their perspective, it just looks so clean and so nice. And obviously their early black is miles above everyone else, so I expect them to be the favorites as always. Other than that, I think, um, I want to say Clem, Maru. Say I think uh, Serol is very strong, obviously he won the regionals, and you know, he's been practicing a lot. I also know that Clem is on point, but uh, we'll see, because Clem is a bit shaky in uh, offline tournaments usually. I think the strongest players here are, well, Maru. I feel like Clem's very good right now, but he hasn't really proven himself in offline events yet. So it's been interesting to see how, uh, how well he will do. I just get a little bit nervous. Um, and then I start playing a little bit worse. Oh, Reynon is a little bit more than uh, Raynor, of course, he's always in the top four as well, so we'll see. He, he didn't get top eight and uh, he didn't get top four in the European regionals, but you still have to respect him as a player. I also think I'm probably being underestimated this tournament because I haven't been doing like good at all in the past few months. As I said, I think I'm decent now. It's just a matter of showing it. For me personally, usually Raynor is just the hardest one. And, uh, he's always <laughs> going to be the hardest match for me. Well, we finally got Reno mentioned in that video. It took about a minute and a half, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering the same thing, man. Everyone's like, okay, yeah, probably Clem, Maru, Cyril, Clem, Maru, Cyril, Clem, Maru, Cyril. Yeah. Then eventually Reno. Reno looks incredibly strong, man. He does indeed. Looks as though we are back as we are ready to go. So we're resuming in a position where Björn is in a fantastic spot. He's been up a good amount of supply. The economy of Reno has obviously been limited heavily throughout this game. And Reynolds just in trouble. Bjorn has the army to deal with what Reynolds has. Reynolds got to pull some Reynolds magic out if he wants to take this game for. Yeah, he doesn't have a good economy. He's got a pretty decent army. He's got a eh, all right set of upgrades. But in basically every statistic, every pillar of StarCraft, we can consider this game an advantage right now for Bjorn. But it's not game over yet. One bad engagement, if you're not feeling 100%, can definitely be the end of Terran. Yeah, these armies are not easy to control. You gotta get those snipes out. You gotta buy the stem of the bio split again. We do see a few links sneaking by. Doesn't look like they're doing anything too meaningful. And Bjorn pretty aggressively pushing forward. He's gonna try and find a couple of different lurkers here and there. So is just working his way through that supply of Reno at the moment. It's looking pretty good for Bjorn. I mean, he really is just in a fantastic position here as he dives forward. These lurkers are gonna get burrowed, but I mean, we're just losing them at such a speedy rate. I just don't think Reno can stand up against this. Yeah, look at the amount of money that both of these players have as well. GG is cold. 
Pyon ends up taking another map. And that means that this best of five series is now 2-2. Two, two, two. And like I say, we go to Babylon map number five. It is definitely one of the ones the Terrans might have usually picked earlier on in the series. Mm -hmm. Usually we end the series on Royal Blood nowadays, or maybe even a Grez fan. Babylon has got to feel good for Bjorn, but Reyno has shown the capabilities of win you know, winning on good Terran maps before Dragon Scales, right? He was so patient, he was so calm, he was able to hold his own for a very long time when necessary. Will he be able to deal with these Reapers effectively? Because I feel like these Reapers continue to cause him a lot of trouble. I mean, this game, yeah. this hatchery so low, made it such an easy target later down the line. Yeah, he had a good opener as well against this particular build, right? At the very least, he had nice and quick zerking speed, but those Banelings and those those Reapers, I mean, they just got so much value off. It's, um, it's been the same build order, essentially, from Beyond, right? With a couple of small deviations here. This particular game, he decided to go for a third barracks rather than just two, but it puts him in the driver's seat of the game. And he essentially never lets go. He just keeps on pushing the entire time. Put us on the pedal, man. And uh, I don't suspect he's going to play a lot more passively in game five. No, no, no. I think he, he's going to play 100%, right? Like, in terms of speed. He's not going to slow down. You can't slow down against someone like Reno. Otherwise, he's the one that's bringing the speed to you. And he will do that very well. One of the things that Bjorn did great in this game was he kept Reno defending and putting all of his attention into moving around against Bjorn's army. Whereas if Reynold doesn't have to spend that attention there, he's going to put that attention into run buys and counterattacks, and those are the things that are very difficult to keep on top of on the Terran side of things, as that was a beautiful engage against those lurkers. Yeah, that was honestly perfect. There was nothing really buffering for those lurkers at that point in the game, and there wasn't enough for Rainer to clean it all up. Most Terran players, man, when they see one lurker spine, they run. <laughs> they see yeah. one set of lurker spines coming out of the ground, and they're like, okay, it's time for me to go and do something else, but Bjorn consistently stims into it. I'm sure other Terran players have tried it too, but it doesn't go so well. Bjorn though, always splitting against it, coming in from multiple angles, and he managed to clean that up wonderfully. Well, we do head in towards Babylon here, map number five in the quarterfinals. Winner is gonna end up in the top four of this event against the winner of Serral versus Classic later on today. In the top left-hand side, can he keep his run alive? The Red Zerg play from Basilisk is Raynor! And his opponent playing here with the blue SCVs, representing the Rebellion, he is Bjorn. I really hope his wrist is okay right now though, because these games, they are very intense, and I really hope that yeah, his wrist is not gonna force him to play a different style or go for a strategy that he wasn't originally planning on going for. Absolutely. I tell you what is different already, though, is that Reynold looks like he wants to go hatchery first, right? Mm -hmm. So that's something we didn't really see in some of the earlier games or the last couple of games. It's been about a faster gas and pool. So he is going to be happy to go back to hatchery first here as Bjorn is still going to open with these dope couple of barracks. Yep. He will once again be sending those Reapers to watch the other side of the map. This does mean that Rainer will be able to get the Queens out a little bit quicker, but he's gonna, uh, yeah, be, he's gonna have to wait a little bit for the Metabolic Boost for the Zerkling Speed Upgrade to finish up. Yep, absolutely. Do you think Bjorn's gonna go back to that 4-Rack style? We've seen that pretty much every you know, game from him so far, right? The 2-Rack Reaper into Barracks 3 and 4. Every time he's gone 2-Rack Reaper, that's been the plan. Any reason to change it up, or do we think it's finally time to bring up something else? No, I think it is indeed gonna be some sort of timing attack. Uh, I think that's a pretty safe assumption to make, also because it's a powerful build, but again, his wrists do seem to be bothering him quite a bit. He's yeah, making some uh, paint faces here on the camera too, if you pay attention to the bottom right-hand corner of your screens. I think if yeah, you are not in the most comfortable position going for a timing attack that you play most of the time and that gives you a lot of success, it's a great strategy to play, but I also wonder if that maybe makes it a little bit predictable. Very possible. Um, I think the openings have been great from Bjorn. He does put himself in pretty good positions. It's incredible defenses from Reyno that have really kept him alive. See the CC going down. First Reaper comes across the map. Let's see how we can do. Six links from Reyno. He's not messing around defensively. He wants to make sure he can deal with the first Reaper even just nice and quickly. Push that back as soon as possible. And as these couple links come around, the Ooh. Evo Chamber to trap the Reaper in for a moment. It's cute, but it does cost you some early money. Yeah, exactly. That is certainly not a free structure. If you can catch that very first Reaper, that's a massive victory. <laughs> not just that, uh, he actually got the circling right there as yeah. he was running around, man. Yeah, I think the Link wanted to block the Reaper to try and get the catch, and so... Like, sit down! But, but it was, it was kind of <laughs> cool, though, right? Because Bjorn realized what he was trying to do. He said, right, I can kill the Link to free myself up. That was a scary moment. That Reaper was in a bit of trouble. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, losing that Reaper would have actually been a problem. So he decides to play triple CC here. Mm. Very quick third command center from our Terran player. That does mean he's happy to play a longer macro game. Rainer here going into the uh, Metabolic Boost upgrade, firing up two additional Queens as well. So he's going to be forced into a third base here a little bit later than he would have liked. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's uh, going to just come through a little bit uh, slower on that's so one of the powers of these Reaper openings that you can deal with this faster third hatchery the Zerg likes to take. You can stop that from coming through. And that's obviously a big deal. Going to go straight into the Marines and the Stim. And obviously without the extra barracks, that's just something that, you know, Reynolds don't have to play against yet. Here come these Reapers. Good first grenade. Turns around Aww. again. It's that move. Yeah. That turn around into the Lings that really allows you to do very well here. It's, in, it's unintuitive, but it's what allows this to work so well. Yeah, he throws a grenade on the ground and then he runs through the Zerklings while they enter in the air. That's actually a really cute move. He's now done it twice in this particular series. Once, I think, in the first game, and apparently once in the last of this best of five as well. Either way, one of the Reapers did end up going down here. A lot of the Zerklings are going to have to be remade. There come the Queens that are ready to push all of this back. But again, it's this triangular third base here for the Zerg. And it's definitely something that Bjorn can get aggressive with, right? He can certainly push across in this direction once again. There's a... A good couple of siege tank spots as well. Now here's the speed links once again. Man, Reaper grenades here from Bjorn are just so ridiculously strong. The grenades have been fantastic and they need to be to keep those Reapers alive. You've got to place everyone so quickly and so perfectly and they really have just been very well placed. Remember, this is just going to be that 3cc behind this. So he's not going to have as many Marines, but he might still push out and see if there's a little bit of something on offer for himself. Factory now on the way up, looking to get into the next stage of this. Now that unit start to move up through the center. No Evo Chamber, no Lair this time around from Raynor. It's a straight Bingling Nest over here and a whole lot of Queens and Zarklings. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't know that there is a third command center already done here for the Terran player. He once again does see the amount of units that are moving across the map, but it's still difficult, right, to figure out exactly what there is out there. One Overlord actually missed position. That one is certainly going to go down. Yep, that it is. Obviously, like you say, Raynor is setting up to deal with this, right? A lot of Lings, Bingling Nest on the way. But Bjorn is just going to go double engineer in bay. He's going to have the follow-up all set. So I think he's done this beautifully all series long. He's been so aggressive behind this two racks. And now he, he goes along with it all the way to pushing the Marines across the map. And then he says, cool, an overlord, and I'm going back home. Mm -hmm. Because it is 3cc. It is everything else. And Reynor has taken a much later lair, much later evo chambers than he ever usually would. Yep. Because he's been preparing to defend. Now, brilliant game so far here by Bjorn. Going into the 1-1 upgrades at this point in time is fantastic for him. Economically, he's in a good position. I'm assuming we can see, there we go, the third command center flying on down towards the low ground as well. He's got all of the tools at his disposal once again. He hasn't really done any critical amounts of damage, and it's not like Raynor's economy isn't great. But as far as upgrades go, and as far as the tempo of the game go, uh, or goes rather, I do really like this position right here for Bjorn. Just, yeah, playing the game exactly the way he had it intended. Yep, I'm just going through this step by step. We do see a few queens coming across the side. Group spread is being pushed across. Getting that fourth base up is Raynor. Even getting some spores up in the main, just preparing for the eventual kind of phase of this game where Bjorn starts dropping all over the place. Because you know it's going to be coming eventually. So he's just on a prep for that. Bjorn about to hit his full on mid game production. All five barracks are going to be done. He is going to be able to start up his armory to head into 2 2. All those timings looking pretty smooth, honestly. Mm -hmm. And he is going to be absolutely soaring away in terms of production very, very shortly. Reynos creep spread here is looking nice. I think that's important here because we are getting to the point in this game where Bjorn is ready to start dropping all over the map. Honestly, I feel like we're already there. Uh, he's been relatively passive. Normally when, he, <laughs> when the man gets two medifacts out and he happens to have marines, he will send them straight across the map. This time around, we're gonna go for a little push here in the center instead. <laughs> Ooh, he needs to get on out of there. That was dangerous. That marine has a story to tell, man. Gun's heart must have skipped so many beats in his life with moments like that where he's like, I've got the, oh no, <laughs> lift up and get out of there. We do have some creep spread is hopefully going to be denied. That's what Bjorn wants to try and keep this creep back as much as possible. The heavy queen count from earlier because Reynolds trying to play defensive is going to allow him to keep on, you know, keeping some of these units back. Bjorn can head into 2-2 now as well. That's going to be an important moment. He can't afford the plus two armor yet, but it should be coming up soon. And you get a lift up there after grabbing one queen. So again, good pressure from Bjorn, pushing back some of the creep in the directions he wants to have the larger pushes in in the next few moments. And he does have 1-1 one, one against 0-0 zero, zero for about another 60 seconds. Yep. And that's huge. Those upgrades are massive. Bjorn, though, not yet firing up the plus two upgrade. That is something he needs to not forget about. There he goes. 
Um, it's very important to make sure that you get all of those upgrades continuously rolling. That way you have multiple timing windows where your units simply deal more damage than your opponents. Now, Raynor, I mean, again, the creep spread, especially on the left side of the map, is looking ridiculously good. This is pretty much close to where Terran is likely going to take their fourth base, right? So you really need to clean this up. And it means that it's difficult for Bjorn to actually push on this side of the map. Yes, no, absolutely. The creep is just uh, an absolute stopper. You don't want to be caught off and you know, caught out in a fight on that position. As you have to lift Ooh. up over here, a few marines will turn and fight Careful. before they die. But uh, yeah, beyond just making sure the balings don't get to connect, he is on that left side as well, just trying to, or the right side as well, just trying to push back creep. And he does get the tank set up over here. This base of Raynor is actually going to be a bit of a troublesome one to defend because the tanks will cover the ramp. The units have to move up. It wasn't so bad in the end there, but. Yeah, you can't let Bjorn kind of take oh. that down easily, as now this hatchery in trouble, and we're going to need some Banelings to break that position. Yeah, without Banelings, it's going to be very difficult to keep that fourth base alive. I mean, we can run all of our Zorklings in, but that is going to be the end for the majority of them. Most of the Banelings over here dodged as well. Banes do show up, but Bjorn decided to pick up and get on out of there before the Banelings could connect. This base is in a whole lot of trouble, Wardy. Yeah, he lost so many Banelings running forward earlier. He's going to have to run in now again, but the tanks put in some serious work. There's no secondary attack at the same time. There's no pincer movement like you might so often see, and that means that Bjorn has had a good couple of trades. He's about to take an upgrade lead as well, and that might be enough for Bjorn to push on through. Bjorn trying to see if he can potentially obtain a victory in the series right here, right now. His siege tanks do end up getting surrounded. Okay, they at the very least are taken out. The creep spread here is still looking decent, but I think it's about time we evacuate this base. We need new Banelings, and well, they're just now morphing in. There's no Banelings at all, so we are going to come through. This hatchery will go down. We've got some Marines already working on the drones as well, so you might be able to replace the base, but making these drones a second time is going to be very difficult. Reino is losing out on a big lot of stuff. And all of a sudden, Bjorn is looking fantastic as he has still got some siege tank reduction here as well. So he's still able to hold this position and now starts working into the next base along. Plus two, plus two, done right here for our player in blue. Raynor forced to evacuate towards another expansion as well. Somewhere far out on the left side of the map, Bjorn just took care of 12 workers, he took care of two hatcheries, and he still has a phenomenal army. This is that timing window you were talking about earlier. It's because of that opener that Jun decided to go for that he's got about a minute or so where he's just so far ahead as far as the upgrades go. So many drones are going down in that main base as well. The units that are showing up are just not enough. The bailing's finally going to get here to push this back. We've killed off structures in this main base as well, so Reynolds going to be limited on what he can make. We're seeing creep spread cleaned out everywhere, and Bjorn is taking bigger and better control of this map. Finally, Reynolds upgrades are evening now, but Bjorn's already on his way to 3-3. Three, three. Just needs to be careful on creep against these Banelings. Reynor is going to have a good chase back here, but it is into a lot of siege tanks. But he will get on top of the tank, yeah. and he is going to win one fight that he maybe wasn't meant to. He doesn't oh. have any lurkers coming up here either. That's another about 10 supply going oh. down. Oh. The Banelings here in the middle of the map as well. Do snipe all of those Marines. Bjorn just lost probably about 40 supply worth of units over the last half minute. He just lost everything. He lost his medivacs, he lost his push, he lost his reinforcements. Bjorn's supply has absolutely plummeted in the last few moments. Ooh. And Raynor is kind of back in this game a little yeah, bit. Yeah, no, that, still... wasn't, that wasn't meant to happen at all. Bjorn was at a game-winning advantage. There was no saving grace here for Raynor. The creep spread was looking all right here on the left side of the map. But we didn't have lurkers, we didn't have hive tech, we've got a whole lot of nothing. Now Bjorn forced to play this a little bit defensively. He does not decide to continue the aggression here. I think instead he decides to wait until his 3-3 upgrades are done. But that is a frustrating moment though. He must have lost what was at least 40 supply worth of units for essentially nothing. It was a lot that went down super quickly. It's fortunate he did so much damage leading up to it because otherwise that would have been game ending in Reynor's favor. Yeah. Bjorn had to lift up his main base. This was a big three base push that seemed like it had the job done, but now he's going to have to pay, make that main base his fourth. That means no planetary fortress there. And Bjorn just has to reset and has to put in a lot more work once again that he kind of had already done in this game. Let's see what he can do in this corner. There's a lot of units. Don't think you'll find anything here. Reynor was just so well set up, already thinking about what Bjorn might be doing next. Okay, so the base at the 12 o'clock position is very ambitious. I just don't see a way for that to happen. That meta effect dropped though in the bottom left-hand corner of the map also shut down pretty handily. Raynor trying to sneak out a hive. He's probably thinking about a lurker then, right? That's really where he wants to be, but it's so expensive. He doesn't have a lot of cash here, and he needs to try and stay alive while he's stacking up towards those expensive units. So maybe just going for upgrades for now is enough. Either way, Gun has finished up plus three, plus three on his infantry. Well, at the very least, the plus three armor here is just seconds away from being done. 
He's found the base at the 12 o'clock position as well. I almost feel like that is bait though. There's no way that Raynor actually anticipated that this expansion was gonna mine. He's taken the bases on the left side of the map. Those are really nicely tucked away uh, behind a lot of creep. Yep, you're just gonna knock this one down easily. The few links pop out, they get away. Bjorn, not much else to do here apart from look to push elsewhere, pushing up this top side. There's no gain to be made anymore. Raynor's gonna come into the center a little bit. Reynolds put himself in a weird spot, man. Like, he's looking to chase those units up there, but he needs to be careful not to get dragged into a fight he doesn't necessarily need to take. These few Banes and Lings running forward. Bjorn was quick to pick up and back away. Of course, if you do push here, you could dive the main base. Four Vipers. Four Vipers. That's why we're going up towards the Hive. Reynolds is just going to try and make high rolling Bane and a bunch of Vipers to maybe get some good blinding clouds, maybe a few abductions. He doesn't want to pull the trigger, though, until those Vipers are out and until they have at least a little bit of energy. Bjorn has a whole lot of creep to go through, and I wonder if that's gonna buy Raynor enough time to get those Vipers into the battle as well. It's gonna give him enough time at the very least to max out. Oh, a few Valens do decide to commit forward here as Raynor loses a little bit. Like you say, those Vipers are out. They're gonna be gaining energy as we speak. And the tanks, they are pretty well split up, but four Vipers means you've got enough Blinding Clouds in theory to deal with this. Bjorn putting himself in a position to maybe force a bigger fight, but again, Raynor might have just slowed this down enough to get the tech online, well, that gives him a bit of a better chance. Vipers have a skill called Blinding Cloud. It's gonna be absolutely critical. Now, I love that. Yeah. Looking down the rocks here is beautiful. Trying to create more and more choke points. I think those Lings and Banes are gonna try and commit to a surround instead. Either way though, where are the Vipers? The Vipers are so critical in this particular engagement. Well, I think they must be ready right now because the Zerk decides to commit. Reinforcements coming in from Bjorn, but they're not there yet. And Bjorn's kind of backed into a corner, locking down those rocks, has locked him in. And Raynor just smashes through everything. Raynor, he put Bjorn in a position where Bjorn just had no space to move to, and that is GG. Raynor turns this lost game around and gets himself a Game 5 victory.